feel it now. It's all around me. A silent voice I can't deny. A mother's This is the Avyakta Murli of 18th January 2008. Baba is talking with double foreigners. Just be careful. Bab Dada will see your register. Pota Mil. When the father says something and the child does it, that is being a worthy child. Saboot. Not one who thinks, should I do this or not? Will this happen or not? The father said it and I did it. This is what it means to be true heir. Not those who think about it, but those who do it. Some children say they will do it, implying in the future, not now. Just watch, I will definitely do it, not like that. Let there be instant action. People speak of an instant donation. But to follow instantly, every action is a great charity. Follow instantly, just as you have got instant donation. People speak of instant donation, but to follow instantly, every action is great charity. There is a difference between charity and great charity. Dan Mahadan You must have seen on the path of devotion that the sacrifice made with one stroke is said to be Mahaprasad. Chatku if the sacrifice is made with thought, like taking time to make the offering, that would not be said to be Mahaprasad. So to follow Srimad instantly is said to be great charity. Is this all right? So to follow Srimad is said to be great charity. Is this all right? You are very sensible, Bab Dada likes it. So, one is great charity. Another is great donation. Both of these things are done instantly. 
So also you should follow the father instantly. Not questioning. Should I do this? Should I do that? That will never happen. Just remember, Baba said, and I did it. That's it. Turant. Questionings, doubts, suspicion. When these are present, you can't obey. You can't follow. Baba is teaching us the virtue of obedience. From copper age till now, we had been obedient. But obedient to whom? Books, scriptures, gurus, ancestors, religions, customs, rituals, ceremonials. Now Baba teaches us a new type of obedience. In fact, this is not obedience to somebody outside. It is obedience to one's own self. Now you have understood the entire drama. So real obedience is not to someone who is outside of me. But the real obedience is obedience to one's own self. Baba teaches us this very obedience. Your very nature is to be calm and quiet. So when you stay calm, you are in fact obedient to your own inner nature. When you are introverted, you are obedient to your inner obedient nature. So our obedience is very different obedience. The soul's real nature, this is what Baba teaches us. That's why it even cannot be said that the father said something and we followed it. Because father is teaching us real obedience and the real obedience is to your own self. Is to follow your basic, your divine instinct. That is real obedience. And when real obedience comes, all questions disappear. There are no more doubts here. Doubts exist so long as we obey somebody who is outside. Though God is someone who is outside, but what he is teaching is the real obedience, which is the obedience to one's own nature, one's own real instinct. Till now, we had been obedient to gods and goddesses, to demigods, to saints, to mahatmas, to priests, to our masters, to landlords, and so on. That is in fact, that was the life of slavery. So can the same be said about God? No. He never wants us to become his slaves. Somebody who is sitting with a rod in his hand and making you to do something. He is not whipping you. He doesn't want this sort of obedience. He wants us to understand our own pure nature. And once you understand your own pure nature, automatically, your journey starts towards yourself. Nobody is teaching you, nobody is telling you, nobody is asking you to do anything. You just start doing everything that is benefiting the soul. So this is the Avyakta Murli of 2008 where Baba is saying, Baba is checking your register and seeing how much you have become obedient. How much instantly and swiftly you follow the Srimat. The real obedience is to follow the Srimat. 
In obedience, there are, as I said, no questions. So here is the master, here is the disciple. The real master is someone who does not answer the questions. Then, what he does with questions of disciple? Disciple has asked a question. What does a real master do? He destroys the questions. Because whatever you ask, and if I answer, from that answer, ten new questions will arise. Whatever question you ask, regarding your health, your purshat, your spiritual life, your weakness, anything you ask, for some days that answer can sustain you. But after some days, ten new questions will arise from that one answer. Now, each of these questions again will give rise to ten new questions. And a huge community is created. The whole village of questions arise. There was a Sufi saint in the 13th century. Jalaluddin Rumi Jalaluddin Rumi Maulana Rumi or Mulwana Rumi Different names have been given to him So once Master Rumi was sitting in his small monastery along with his disciples and there was a desert surrounding some travelers were passing by with their camels. When they saw, what is this? Oh, a monastery. Let's peep in. And they tried to hear, over here, what is going on. And they were shocked. There were strange questions and there were strange answers. So they thought, let us not wait here. We will go away. It's a waste of time. After many years, they come back and they happen to pass by the same way. They find that Rumi alone is sitting and not a single disciple is there. He is sitting alone. So they ask, what happened? Where are the disciples? And what happened to their questions? So he says, I have destroyed their questions. But where are they? Now they are doing the same task which I did. I have sent them to destroy the questions which others have. And if they are unable to do that, they can bring that man here and I will destroy his questions. So it's not about answering any questions. Even if somebody asks a question, he is not asking to know the answer. Suppose a class is going on in Om Shanti Bhavan, and Dadi Janki is presiding over the class. Somebody asks, Oh Dadi, how to do Purushat? So he is not asking to know the answer. He is not interested in question, in answer. He is interested in question. Rather he is interested in, I am asking. He is asking, not in knowing the answer, because answers are already known and they are so boring. Who doesn't know the answer? Yet people keep on questioning to new persons. That is to express or to let others know that we are sitting, one. That is, the importance is not of the answer. It is the importance of I am asking. And to create an impression upon the speaker that we are not sleeping, we are alert and we are really doing purushat and these are the pro difficulties we are facing in our purushat, that's why we are asking. But they are asking in, in front of public. So the importance is not about a, getting an answer, it's all about questioning. People love to question. 
people love to question and they are not interested in answers i have seen multiple times sitting here with groups and people ask questions i have not finished the answer and they have next question ready <laughs> so when i am answering their question they are preparing for the next question <laughs> so they are really not interested in answers many times they will stop me and ask another question which is absolutely unrelated okay let it forget this now tell me something about my son who is doing some job he should change or not the question started with purushat and they are ending in laukik preoccupations or the more often than not the questions are spiritual to start with and they end up with medicals in fact they wanted to ask only medical questions but then they feel awkward to start with medical so they begin with spiritual but their aim is gradually to come to oh doctor i am sending you my reports please go through them the basic was this they are this outside the spiritual was just a layer and one more thing i have observed suppose three people are sitting okay and they are asking me questions two of them are asking question the third one never asks a single question but he is the one who gets the answer he is the one who is the real seeker he is the one who has not answer ask a single question but whatever question these two people have asked and whatever i have answered he gets the answer to his questions without asking because he is the real seeker those who are interested only in asking and asking and asking there for them asking is an addiction they just want new person and they just pounce upon him with their questions and they pile a load of questions in front of the new person and as they are already they already know the answers because they have asked the same question to multiple people in the past tell us how to do amrit vela so there is an excitement in new questions but once they receive the answer they are totally depressed because they have not got anything new because whatever is told they already know that so what is obedience then the real obedience is not this obedience to god obedience to yagya obedience to seniors obedience to shrimat obedience in seva the real obedience is to one's own nature the real obedience is to creation the real obedience is to nature nature means five elements when you live your life according to nature you live a natural life you will not fall sick but when you go against nature when you disobey nature you fall sick nature says for example nature says drink natural water but you have invented a refrigerator this is dangerous you know refrigerants they are gases how does refrigerator operate gas converts into liquid liquid again gets converted into gas gas again converts into liquid liquid again converts into gas and some of the gases are dangerous they deplete ozone layer so any food which is kept here loses the energy those who are addicted to drinking chilled water what is happening to them they are going against nature they are breaking the rules of prakriti nature so they are destined to fall sick they say it's summer and i have been drinking chilled water from last 30 years and i have not fallen sick what you are saying and we just enjoy firstly you are very thirsty you take a bottle of water from fridge and start drinking 
within a, a small time your thirst is quenched but that is not real quenching of thirst the water is so chilled that the entire system has got contracted so it tells you the body tells you to stop had it been water at room temperature you would have drunk more one second digestion digestion is impaired by drinking any water from fridge you are going against nature you keep food rather than eating fresh fruits if you keep fruits in the refrigerator the energy is depleted subtle energy outside everything might appear okay but we are disobeying nature so anything which is kept in refrigerator chill water even food that doesn't remain the fresh one as i said this process of refrigerant has these gases gas liquid gas liquid gas liquid gas liquid so no even if it is a hot sultry summer avoid this avoid this go for natural that is obeying nature if you take this you might have congested throat and the virus might attack you soon when the immunity is already down yeah the entire system slows down there are enzymes in the body which work at room temperature now when you are taking chilled food chilled ice cream chilled water so when that enters the system it has first to come down to that system of the body it consumes consumes energy so an extra energy is spent for converting that chilled into normal temperature inside the body so the body has to work extra now you have to consume conserve your energy for higher purposes of spirituality you are spending your energy here so obedience is real obedience is to your own real nature your nature is to be as natural as possible very nature of the soul is to be calm to be quiet to be peaceful to be loveful to be blissful to be happy that is your nature to be cooperative in today's slogan baba said cooperation and good wishes are drops with these drops you can achieve any work any great work these are drops so our very nature is this to come back to this nature is the real obedience in today's murli baba said multiple times in golden age this is not there this is not there this is not there this is not there now you have to go back to golden age so prepare yourself for that there is no crying there there is no vices there so create those same sanskars here eat what the date is eat drink what the date is in satyuga there is no fridge no refrigerator so it is stupidity to drink chilled water ac people have ac how does that operate fan even let the fresh air come open the windows let the air rush into your room why you need any fan there's no need sweat when you wake up in the morning there should be lot of sweat natural and then you take bath you will feel refreshed these birds do they use ac or fan as less no let the air circulate in the room 
be as natural as possible and the life energy will flow in you and the energy will increase every day so our real nature is as deities were be like that so this is the real obedience it is not that about this some that do this do this do this do's and don'ts this is not obedience obedience is should be natural obedience should be it should appeal to me it is not written anywhere but i feel that yes it should be done and when i do this i feel real joy that is obedience it should not be forced obedience it should not be because of fear obey this otherwise you will go to hell <laughs> you know hell hinduism talks about hell how many types of hell are there in hinduism okay 14 types of hell in christianity one type of hell in islam one type of hell in judaism one type of hell there's one person who has uh, described about how many 300 types of hell you know this man he was a contemporary of mahavira and buddha sanjay his name is i, I was knowing his name is uh, yeah belatiputta sanjaya belatiputta just as mahavir buddha and this third person they were together he is less famous these two are more famous so he has his own new path this path is known as agyana this is a new path a new sect just as buddhism sikhi jainism this was agyana agyana marg so this belatiputta he describes 300 types of hell jainism describes three types of hell for mahavira one hell was not enough one hell is for those people who commit little crimes like eating biscuits eating underground roots so okay small sins another hell is for bigger sins and the third hell for biggest sins so three types of hell in jainism one type of hell in buddhism one type of hell in christianity in judaism hinduism have got the 14 types but otherwise only one type they call it hell nark names are different in that hell there are different subdivisions but this man describes 300 types of hell because there are three types 300 type of people doing 300 different types of sinful activities so obedience means obey your real nature option